Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. The stunning ignorance of doctors. Yes, I really mean that. Stunning levels of ignorance. I want to highlight this with a particular story. Am I saying that every single doctor out there is ignorant or a bad person? No, of course I'm not saying that. I'm a doctor myself and in the interests of full transparency, a lot of my friends are doctors and I think there are many good doctors out there. They're perfectly good people. If you see them out and about, if you meet them in the grocery store or anywhere else, they're normal people who want to go to work, want to provide for their families, want to do a good job. But I will say this, there is something very wrong with the level of ignorance that has descended over the profession. And to a large extent, every doctor should step back and look themselves in the mirror. Because if you are silent, if you aren't doing your job, if you're not being a critical thinker, then you are part of the problem. And I'm going to highlight this by sharing a story with you. And I've told you this story before in other videos. Many of you have already heard it, but it can't be told enough because it's a true story of what happened during the pandemic and what I saw with my own eyes and experienced. Let's go back to the end of 2020. I remember I was actually walking on a street in a city and my phone started buzzing and there were news headlines galore. We have found the answer to the pandemic problem. A new shot has come out, safe and very effective. And this is going to be the beginning of the end. All right, well, I'm quite wise to the ways of the world, so I never accept a mainstream media headline particularly if the mainstream media is sponsored by the pharmaceutical industry. That seems like common sense to me, but it seems to be lost on a lot of people. So I went and I actually spent the 10 minutes, that's all it takes, to actually read the article. I went over the way the study was designed, the methods, the results, and the conclusions. And I thought, hmm, I don't know why everybody is so excited because there are some very obvious flaws in the study. And I blogged about it at the time and I said this wasn't going to be the end. There are massive questions regarding groups excluded from these studies. There are a lot of questions about the results, the very low absolute risk reduction. And I'm also concerned about potential side effects and adverse events in some people who are receiving the shot. And I actually did blog about this and I talked about it at the time in some videos. But that seemed to be lost on most doctors out there. I remember doctors who were all jumping on the bandwagon, what's the term, Billy bandwagon. And they were posting all over social media these pictures of themselves receiving the injection into their arm with captions saying, the end. And I thought, this seems strange that you would be so overly optimistic that this was going to be the end, because I don't think it's going to be the end by any stretch of the imagination. People are still going to get infected. You may well get infected within the next few months again, because I've actually taken the time to read the study. And I asked a few of the doctors around me at the time, and I had interactions online, and I said, look, this is my concern. And at the time, I thought I was simply doing my job and being a critical thinker. And I asked them, have you actually read the study? Have you spent 10 minutes actually critically appraising the study results and thinking about things? And overwhelmingly, the answer was no, I haven't read the study. And I thought, you're a doctor and you haven't even done that. What does that mean? You're simply going on the mainstream media headline or what the pharmaceutical company is telling you. Why don't you do your job? Anyway, a few months passed and things panned out exactly as I expected them to. Lots of people who received the shot were still getting infected. And that's how things work with an easily transmissible, rapidly mutating respiratory virus. This didn't seem like some Einstein theory or thought that I had. This seemed very obvious to me. But yet people seemed very surprised. So I thought after six months, let me ask around again, all these doctors, did you actually read the initial study? And overwhelmingly again, the answer was no, I haven't read the study. Overwhelmingly, 
That was the answer. Okay, fine. A few months later, about a year after the shot, I asked around again, and still, most doctors had not taken the time to actually read the study. And this was absolutely shocking to me. Now, a couple of years after that, I'm not so surprised because I've really had time to ponder on how the world of healthcare, how organized medicine, how physician societies work. They rely on doctors simply following orders. And most of the time, doctors will do that. They will go along with the narrative. Whatever happened to intellectual curiosity, to being a critical thinker, to doing your job as a doctor and answering all the right questions and being fully honest and transparent with people, Whatever happened to that? I tell this story and I'm going to keep telling this story to really highlight the massive problem that we currently have within the medical profession. And that is a desire to simply do whatever physician societies, whatever the institutions tell doctors to do, to never be a critical thinker, to really look at data, to break it down yourself. Because to me, that seemed like a normal thing that any doctor should be doing. At least that's what I was taught to do in medical school. I'm not sure if nowadays or in the United States they teach it less. I don't think they do. It's a core part of any medical curriculum to understand statistics, to ask questions, to look for conflicts of interest. But that was not happening at all during the pandemic. And I also had other concerns because I'd actually taken the time to read up on what had happened before with mRNA therapy in trials which were halted because of concern. I knew about that, but apparently that was completely lost on my colleagues who completely failed to do even basic research on what had happened only within the last few years before 2020. And I can pretty much guarantee you to this day that if you were to go out there and ask most doctors, did you spend 10 minutes reading the initial study on what was the biggest medical story of your lifetime. You're a doctor. You spent goodness knows how many years studying and training and the biggest medical story of your life. You couldn't even be bothered to ask the right questions. And again, this is not an attack against any one particular doctor. This is a call to action for members of the medical profession to look themselves in the mirror and ask themselves whether they are really doing their job or whether they are mindlessly following the narrative. And this highlights three important points with regards to the modern day medical profession. Number one, groupthink, a tendency to jump on board that Billy bandwagon, whatever everybody else is saying, whatever you're seeing on the news. To be fair, this is a very human trait. Doctors are humans. This is chimpanzee behavior at a primal level. You want to be part of the group. You don't want to ask any uncomfortable questions. But if doctors aren't asking uncomfortable questions and telling people the truth and being transparent, then who is going to do that? Groupthink is terrible within medicine and science. We have a long history of it, sadly. Will we ever overcome this? Number two, that lack of critical thinking. I've already used the term intellectual curiosity. That should be the very basic fundamental of medical practice. Observation. Asking curious questions. When you see a study, you break down the results. You look for conflicts of interest, but you do so with an open mind and full curiosity. And number three, complete professional laziness. There is no excuse for professional laziness in the medical profession. Doctors should never mindlessly do what they are told to do. They must speak up because if doctors aren't going to do it, then what hope is there for society? I do not accept the excuse that doctors are in debt, that doctors do a hard job, that doctors are scared of stepping out of line. They're scared of losing their jobs. That is not an excuse. That is cowardly behavior and total laziness. So I did want to share that story with you because it's important for the general public to realize that doctors, unfortunately, the medical profession is completely captured right now. 
And if doctors are not going to do their job, then what hope is there for society? I actually think on a larger level, a lot of the other problems we're seeing in society right now are the direct result of the medical profession being completely captured and lost and doctors being unwilling to speak up for what is right. There are plenty of other stories as well that I could share with you from the pandemic era, which I believe, I know actually, you would find completely shocking. Things that I saw, things that I experienced, the memory of the pandemic is still quite raw and there are certain things that I can say and can't say even now on a public arena. But one day I will share these stories with you. But let's start off with that acknowledgement that doctors did not really ask the right questions. They were not curious. They were not looking at the studies. They were simply accepting what the mainstream media and Big Pharma told them. And that is completely and utterly unacceptable. And it highlights a stunning ignorance on the part of the medical profession. Thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Check out my free newsletters. Those links are down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. We will speak again next time.